Hey everyone, Sam Evans here, and today I want to talk to you about long-term thinking, moats, and asymmetric warfare. So, some pretty unique things, probably haven't heard about those, probably not really popular things that people are talking about right now, but there's a reason for that. And really, you know, the people who do the best in their markets, you know, the, the kingpins of their different niches and the market leaders and really the captains of industry and the people who just dominate everybody else, they don't think like everybody else. And they do things almost polar opposite to what most people do. And this is a really big lesson in life and business. And I'll tell you what I mean. So most business owners and most entrepreneurs and most CEOs, they think and they ask the question, what is something cheap, easy and fast that we can do to gain a competitive advantage, right? They wanna have an advantage, they wanna have an edge because you need that to win and you need that to differentiate yourself in business. It's so important. But they ask the question, how can we get an edge with something that's easy, cheap and fast, right? But people like Jeff Bezos and you know people like billionaires, they ask the opposite question. They, they say, like, what is something we can do that is expensive, takes forever, and is excruciatingly hard that gives us an advantage? And think about it for a moment. You'd be like, what? Why would they want to do that? Like, why wouldn't they just want the easy advantage? Well, here's the thing. Easy advantages are quickly like they are quickly found out by other people and they're quickly implemented because they're easy. And as soon as other people implement them, they are no longer advantages. And when they're no longer advantages, your advantage ceases to exist. And then it's irrelevant and it pretty much isn't an advantage. And this is the importance of long-term thinking. And most people that I see in business today, they don't do this. They only really think about now. They're basically just fly-by-night opportunists looking to get some money so that they can look rich on Instagram or looking to get some money to buy a car and, you know, buy a Rolex and things like that. And, you know, don't get me wrong, there's nothing really wrong about doing that, but that sort of mentality in the long term is going to absolutely wipe you out because other people are going to be smarter than that and they're going to be thinking more long term. And in business, what I see these days is most people just thinking, what's something really easy, cheap, and uh, fast to do so that we can get an advantage. Things like, oh, we should run Facebook ads, or we should set up this funnel, or we should do you know, this, this new thing, like we should jump over to Bitcoin and start talking about that, or chatbots, let's go talk about that, or let's go use that. But the thing is, is these things are only advantages for a short period of time, and then they are no longer advantages once other people find out about them and do it. So if you really, if you want to win in business long term, and all businesses is long term. You know, if you don't win long term, you don't win. So if you actually want to win in business, you need to start thinking long term. And when you start thinking long term, you really want to start thinking like, how can I gain a competitive advantage that other people can't get easily or cheaply or in a short amount of time? And I'll give you a perfect example. A lot of people think Amazon is an internet business and it's, you know, it's just got a good website, a good brand, and they've got like good uh, marketing and good SEO, but that's just the start of it. What Amazon's real competitive advantage is, is its fulfillment. So it has factories, it has ships, it has airlines, it has fleets. It has, it's probably the largest distribution and shipping network on earth. And you know you, you can guarantee it, like they're going to take over DHL and all of those other uh, shippers and, and logistics businesses. They're going to just steamroll all of those people. They're already the, the largest shipper in the world. So they're, and they have the most logistics in the world. And so that's what really gives Amazon the advantage because it's easy to just put up a website and sell a bunch of products, but n nobody else on earth can ship someone a product in one day for free and at that price. Nobody. And if you don't believe me, try and do it. Try and start a little e-commerce business and then notice where you get screwed. It will be in the shipping because you'll buy something, drop shipping something from China. It'll take like 30 days before it gets to the damn customer and they'll have to pay for that. And so that's what you're up against when you're competing with Amazon. It's not just about buying ads. It's not just about setting up a Shopify store and then, you know, having a click funnel. 
It's not about that. It's about something much deeper and much harder that no one else can do. Because if you wanna compete with Amazon in that way, you've gotta go and build all of that stuff and that's gonna cost you billions. Billions and billions and billions and it's gonna take you 25 years and it's gonna be excruciatingly painful and you're gonna need half a million human beings to do it. Now that's a competitive advantage. And so what I see in the marketplace right now is people are doing, you know, they build their website on WordPress with a template. Boom, done. And then they will uh, copy somebody else's funnel and you, they'll use ClickFunnels, which is a software you can get, and they'll deploy that funnel. Boom. Then they'll look at Facebook ads because everyone's doing them and then they'll just copy someone's ad. Boom, done. And then their product will be generic and pretty much just a, a knockoff of somebody else's that's watered down and not as good. Launch it. And then they try and make money out of it. And it, this, this venture pretty much always fails. And if it does succeed, it will only be short-lived because as soon as other people notice that you're making money doing that, then they're gonna come in and compete with you. And if it's easy to knock you off, then they're gonna win and they're gonna steamroll you and you no longer have a business. But if you start thinking longer term, how can you do things that others can't? This is where the real magic starts to happen. How can you develop long-term competitive advantage that other people cannot imitate or do on their own. Now, when it comes to doing this, there's four main things that, well, there's, there's infinite things that you can do that will give you a long-term competitive advantage, but there's four things that I want to tell you about right now that you could deploy right away. The first one is just, is just straight up like how good you are at what you do or how good your product or service is. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing in the world is how good the product or service is. Because that's, that's, that's the main thing. And you wanna make sure you get the main thing better than anybody else. And so if you're like selling, if you're a consultant or a coach or a service provider, you wanna make sure that your work is as good or better than anybody else's. And if it's not, well, you, the most productive use of your time right now is figuring out how to be the best. Because when you're the best, that's hard for somebody else to replicate. It's not like you're just using Facebook ads. Someone can knock that off in a day. It's not like you're just using like a funnel or some software. Someone can knock that off in a day. But to be the best, well that's gonna take thousands of hours and years of mastery and commitment and practice. Things that other people aren't gonna have the stomach for. And they might think, oh, I'll have a crack at competing with this guy, and then they'll try it, and then they're like, screw that, man. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's too much work for me. And you want people to do that. You know, a lot of the time when people are building businesses, they think, oh, well, you know, this is hard work, man. This is real hard work. And this is taking me a long time. And I didn't know it was going to be this hard, but I like that stuff because the harder it is, the, you know, the, the more grueling it is and the more gnarly the problem is that you battle through and conquer. The cool thing about doing that is that you know that everybody else has to go through that hellfire to get to where you are. And you know that that's gonna burn all of them and only a few are gonna be strong enough to make it through there. So I take a different sort of view on things. I try to do the things that are really hard that no one else wants to, wants to tackle so that I can get on the other side and then have that fire kind of as a shield protecting me. And this is, with the more of those things that you tackle and the more of those fires that you walk through and conquer, the more competitive advantage that you have. And this is what's referred to as having a moat. So you know, like a castle has a moat around it, like it, it's a, um, like a little river or a canal thing that goes around it, which makes it harder for people to, to raid it and climb the walls back in the times when castles always got taken over. And when you have a business, you wanna have a moat too. And it's not a physical moat, but it's a, um, an abstract moat. So basically competitive advantages that are hard for other people to imitate. And there's, there's only a few ways things can be hard. One is because it's complicated and you've figured it out. The other one could be that it takes a long amount of time and you've put in that time. Or the third one is that it's very expensive and you've put in that money, right? Three things, complexity, difficulty, and uh, time, and cost, right? And if you think about what makes Amazon a great business, it's tackled the most complex problems, how to ship things all around the world, like in one day. It's tackled the longest things, it's taken it 25 years to build that stuff. It's hired 
600,000 employees, right? Imagine doing that, that's a big thing. And it's cost huge amounts of money. It's cost hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Those are things that are hard to do. It's not because they've got a funnel, it's not because they're running ads. It's deep, so deep that most people would look at it and think, oh, like, I'm not even gonna have a go. And even if they wanted to have a go, no bank would back them because they can't raise as much capital as them and they, their chances of competing with them are very low. So this is an, a, a, an example of a competitive advantage. You want it to be, you want it to be hard, complicated, you want it to be long-term or expensive, right? Now, there's, there's one thing that you can really focus on here in your business right now, and that's systems. So systems are awesome things. Systems give you an advantage because most people, they run their business in a way that's just like, it's what, what's a good way to refer to it? They're just kind of guessing all the time and they just kind of, they just kind of do things based on the day. You know, they wake up, they come to their computer, they check Facebook, they check Gmail, and then they're like, what should I do today? Oh, I might do this, or I might write a blog, or oh, I might start chatting to this person on here, or oh, I might go over here and watch this podcast, oh, I might do a tweet, oh, I might do a post. That's, that's their game plan, right? That's what they're doing each day. Now, like someone who's doing that, they're not doing much. They're doing something, but it's not much. And if you have systems, that means that you can just follow the systems and you don't get lost kind of in a labyrinth or a maze and you don't just do a whole bunch of things that really don't, don't align in their purpose or their objective and you get to focus on specific things that are really gonna drive progress and drive you towards your goal. So let's, let's get some examples of some systems. So instead of just marketing everywhere by writing blog posts and things like that, you can choose a channel and master it. So you could choose Facebook ads or you could choose YouTube ads or something and master that thing and channel all of your energy into mastering that thing instead of it just going everywhere. Another example is instead of just relying on people to email you or stumble across your stuff, create a funnel, create a system. So in my business, I mastered Facebook ads. That's where I got most of my traffic from. I wanted to be the best at that thing. And I didn't focus on anything else. I just shut off everything else and got good at that. Then I needed a funnel to really take that traffic and convert it into customers. And instead of building a bunch of funnels, I built one. And I've honed and refined one funnel for like four years. And I've put thousands of hours of effort into one funnel. And that's a system. Now I've got two systems working together, like I know Facebook ads like no one else, and then funnels like no one else. So then these two things together, hard to replicate. Most people don't have the discipline or the relentless single-minded focus. No, not many people are willing to put five years into one thing, right? That's what gives you an advantage. Most people are only willing to put a day or a week of, some, in, of work into something. Like sometimes I'll put 12 hours a day of work for four years straight into one thing. That's what gives you an advantage because other people aren't, well, they don't have the guts to do that. That means that you're, you know, you're here and they can't get there because they're not willing to do what it takes to get there. Now, another thing other than systems is like a brand. So a lot of people, they launch like a, like a product and then they launch another one and then another company and then another thing. And all of their effort and their energy goes into all of these different areas. And then they might close this brand, close this thing, close that, close that. And really that means that it's all going to waste and you have no long-term compounding interest on one particular thing. So a really powerful thing you can do from the beginning is to, to create a brand. Now, if your brand's gonna be your own name, like samovens.com and it could be Sam Ovens, that's what you could use, right? That's a good way to start building your name as a brand. And then you can start you know, posting uh, different thoughts that you have about it. You can start growing your audience. You can post some different videos. And then as you're advertising, you're growing your awareness and you're building a brand. Because over time, a brand becomes a very hard thing to compete with. You know, Amazon is a very trusted brand because so many people have interacted with it every day for a long period of time. And they know if they buy something from that thing, it's just gonna show up. They, people don't even think about it, whether it's gonna show up or not, because it has that brand recognition. That's another thing that makes it hard to compete with them. So in my business, I'll give you an example of this. So I decided to create a brand and I bought the domain name consulting.com, which cost me a lot of money. And then I put the time and effort into it to develop 
like content and things like that so that we could build something for the future. Now, here's the thing. In the short term, a move like that isn't gonna give you much of an advantage. It's actually gonna cost you money. I, I lost money initially on that because it's a very expensive domain. You have to build all this stuff, very expensive. And in the short term, you lose. And most people aren't willing to lose short term. But in the long term, that'll give me huge competitive advantage. It'll have SEO rankings, and it will have brand recognition and all of that. Plus, it's expensive to buy a domain like that, and it takes time and effort, and you have to lose money in the short term, something most people aren't willing to do. You know, one of Amazon's biggest advantages is that they're willing to go underwater with big oxygen tanks longer than anyone else will. So another way, reason why Amazon's demolished the competition is because they, they haven't made a profit in like 25 years, right? Most people in, the, in my industry, like online courses and coaching and internet marketing, these guys need to make a profit every week because they need to pay the payments on their Lamborghini and they need to pay for their, their private jet trips so that they can get some Instagram photos and pretend to be rich, right? So they need that profit. They absolutely need it to feed their lifestyle, right? It's like they've got to feed this hungry beast over here, Mr. Lifestyle, and so they, it, it takes a toll on the business. And the business just ends up being this like neglected like thing that doesn't get like any attention and it's just being choked all the time for money to feed the hungry lifestyle. And when you get into that situation, it's dangerous. No one ever survives that. In the long term, it takes everybody. All the athletes that like in NFL and everything that started making a lot of money, they got started having flashy lifestyles, the lifestyle started to pull on them. And then, you know, the, the career kind of dried up a bit, the market moved, poof, gone. And you don't want that to happen to you. So you want to try and, you know, if the, the thing that can kill a business like that is doing the opposite. So if you start to make, if someone's business, if you're competing with a business that has to make profit so that they can feed their lifestyle, then if you turn your business into one that's not making profit and you're not taking it out to feed your lifestyle, but you're recycling that money within the business so that it can gain competitive advantage, then it will crush that other business. And then when it crushes it, you get to, like absorb all of that money, and then in the long term, you can have a way better lifestyle than the person that you just overthrew and decimated. So this is the thing, right? Most people don't think long term. They just think short term. How can I get money for me, 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 me today, instead of how can I beat everybody long term? So this is something that no one talks about, but this is the stuff that will turn you into like an eight figure earner and you know a nine figure earner and a billionaire and all of that. It's long term thinking. How can I get an edge that nobody else has? Another thing you can do is build a team. So a lot of small businesses stay small because they're not willing to do what it takes to get big. And to get big, you have to, number one, like take more risk. You have to invest more money. You have to go from making profits to breaking even or making losses in order to grow. And you also have to hire a team. And with a team comes overhead and complexity and all of these things that suck and that you've never had to deal with before. And you're like, why do I, you know, this business is just giving me money for my lifestyle. Why would I want to go through this crap? Well, most people aren't willing to go through that. And so they don't. And if you go through it and you build the team, you develop the culture, you absorb those costs and, and take that, those hits to get there, well, long term, you win. And so a lot of people in business, they think, oh, don't hire a team, just outsource it, you know, put VAs overseas and all of that stuff and just use a bunch of contractors. But when you do this, you can't gain an edge. And in business, you need an edge. And if you're using a contractor to do your ads, and he's doing everyone else's ads, well then, you're only gonna have ads as good as everybody else. That sucks, because now you're, now you're not gonna beat everybody, you're just like everybody else. So that's not an advantage. But if you hire someone in-house, put them in-house, you train them, and you turn them into an animal, then you've got something nobody else has, and then you can start running circles around them. So a lot of people in my industry, they try to outsource everything, use contractors for everything, and never build anything. You know, every software application that they use is somebody else's that they just license. Then every person they use in their business is a contractor that everybody else can hire. This means that your entire business is replicable by somebody else almost overnight. They can find the software you're using and use it and they can uh, find the people you're using and use them. 
that means that they can quickly take your advantage off you. If you have an in-house team, other people can't get them to work with them at the same time. Also, if you build your own proprietary systems, then other people just can't use those. Huge advantage things. And a lot of the time when you're just starting out, these things aren't things that you know are available to you as options because you don't have that much money or something. But later on, this is when you wanna start thinking about these things. And the fourth one really brings me to technology. And this is a huge thing that you can have as a competitive advantage. So when Amazon was building their business, they noticed that all the technology out there wasn't good enough for them, and they wanted to be better than everybody else. So they had to build their own everything. When it came to processing orders, you know, they just didn't use a Shopify, they built their own. When it came to using a website, they couldn't just find a WordPress template, so they built their own. When it came to hosting, they didn't just use WP Engine or Bluehost, they built Amazon Web Services, they built their own. When it came to uh, shipping, they didn't like how long it took with DHL and FedEx, so they built their own. Then when it came to everything, they built their own. Now most businessmen these days and entrepreneurs these days, they'd think, dude, don't do anything yourself, don't do anything, just use other people to do everything. Like use like all the software that's on the market, use a WordPress template, use contractors you can hire, but this is a great way to start, don't get me wrong, because it's fast, cheap, easy, and anyone can do it. But long term, you ain't gonna build a killer business if you do these sorts of things. You wanna start building your own technology. You wanna start you know, being a pioneer and trying things that haven't even been done. Like a lot of the things we've looked at in our business just haven't been done yet. Like a lot of the stuff that I've wanted to do, I'll give you an example, like multi-channel attribution. Now this is complex, My, a lot of you probably don't know what this is, but it's when you have, like you're running YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, you're running all of these different ads, and someone might click on that one, then 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 that one, and then you've got to figure out, well, who, what channel actually, actually created that sale? Was it Facebook? Was it YouTube? What was it? It's a problem. And nothing I've found out there can do it. And we've looked hard, and we've looked into everything. So instead, we just built our own. And now it's one of our best competitive advantages because we know for a fact where that thing came from. And that enables us to have better information that nobody else can get. And it enables us to make better decisions, clearer, more accurate, more factual scientific decisions that nobody else can make. And when we make better decisions than everyone else and act on better information than everybody else, we get to beat everybody else. And so this is something, and it's cool because it's not just an advantage that someone's gonna share in a Facebook group and then it's gone because it's hard and it's costly. It costs me more than a million bucks and it cost me about 18 months to build this thing, right? So another example, it's not a Amazon advantage, like, because Amazon has, you know, so much time invested, so much money, so many people, so much complexity that they've conquered, but it's still an advantage that's, that's been good enough to give me, you know, an edge on some of the competition. And really what this is, is it's asymmetric warfare. And what asymmetric warfare is, is it's playing by different rules. So in any game, you've, if you've got a competitor, then you don't wanna play by the same rules as they are. That's a surefire way to lose. Because most of the time when you're a small business, it's like David versus Goliath, right? You've got, you don't have that much money, you don't have that much manpower. And so if you just play by their rules, they're gonna absolutely demolish you. So you've gotta play by different rules. That's the secret to it. And that's what asymmetric warfare like is, is about. And so examples of this is if everybody's doing that, well then how can you do something else? If everybody's doing Facebook ads, then maybe you wanna look at doing something else. Or if everybody's in this niche, then maybe you should go into that niche. Or if everybody's doing it this way, what if you do it this way? You wanna start looking at doing things differently and playing by different rules, because when you start to play by different rules, you can defeat the enemy by ways they didn't know were possible, and you can be much more efficient at it. A perfect example of this is Amazon versus Walmart. You know, Jeff Bezos read uh, Made in America by Sam Walton, awesome book. If you haven't read it, you gotta read it. I got a copy of it right here. It's probably one of my most favorite books of all time. But, like, the Jeff Bezos got the, the inspiration and the idea to build Amazon from reading that book. 
And so he built a modern day Walmart. And that's what really Amazon is. And if you read that book, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of the DNA of Amazon was extracted out of Walmart. He basically made the online Walmart. That's what Amazon is. And it, Amazon has now beaten Walmart. And so they, they played by different rules. Jeff Bezos wasn't trying to make more physical stores and, you know, and be better at like, operating physical stores and supply chain than Sam Walton at Walmart. That's, that would be a hard battle. Probably a battle you don't want to do. But what he did instead is he did it online, playing by different rules. And when you play by different rules, it's much easier to defeat the competition. And that's what asymmetric warfare is. So that, that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. I just wanted to tell you about long-term thinking. You want to think long-term. In business, if you want to win, think years ahead. Well, you want to think five years, 10 years out and make decisions today and take actions today that are gonna give you big competitive advantage in the long term. Also, moats. Think about your business. Does it have a competitive advantage that other people can't emulate? Or if they try to emulate it, is it hard? And the third one, asymmetric warfare. What game are you playing? Who is your enemy? And how can you change the rules of the game and find their blind spot and get them? So. That's what this video is all about. And if you implement this stuff, like no one's talking about this stuff. Most of what people are talking about on the internet when I check uh, like Facebook, which isn't very often for, for, the, for this reason, but they're talking about things that everyone else is doing. Like, oh, use this funnel. Oh, run ads like this. Oh, put a chat bot up. Oh yeah, that small amount of money you've got left in your bank account, put it into Bitcoin, right? No one ever got rich doing that shit. They actually lost their money and got their ass kicked. So, you know, what's popular is often wrong, and what hasn't been done is often the things that make greatness. So, you know, just become more of a contrarian. Like, don't just listen to everyone and what they're saying and what's popular and everything. Learn to think for yourself and think long term and think how you can get an edge and think how you can get a competitive advantage in whatever it is that you're doing. So that's it for this video. If you liked this video, just click that like button. And also, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section beneath. I'm gonna be checking all of the comments myself personally, and I'll reply to them myself, so let me know what you think. Also, click that subscribe button on YouTube to subscribe to my channel and get more videos like this. I release one each week. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to sharing the next one with you soon.